Well, good evening, everybody. It's good to be here. I'm making this on a Friday night about 11 o'clock in the p.m. And uh, I just felt like I needed to come. And uh, I don't have no Bible open. I mean, I've got a Bible in front of me here, but I don't really have no uh direction um to open it up to and to read it um i don't make many videos like this uh that much um i do the nursing home ministry and i do have a little small uh, congregation that is a, allowing me to to speak to them. I'm not technically, I guess we could say the pastor of the church, but I had the opportunity to share my heart, and um, I believe the Lord has opened up that door for right now. I don't know how long the door will be open. Um, I am doing one nursing home, and I thank the Lord for that. Um, part of my thinking tonight is I hear on occasion where people bring messages over the Facebook, and I've never really done a live version. I never have went live. Uh, I don't really know if I know what I'm doing if I go live. I don't know who will watch, who will tune in. I've never did, done one live. And uh, the people that happen to watch my videos, they're going to see me, even though it's a video, it, they're going to see me. So I don't really know the advantages of going live. I don't know how many people would even care to even tune in if I was to go live. I feel like that when I make a video, I'm live. I'm live and in color right now. And uh, I don't have thumbs going up beside the page and hearts of love that goes up beside the page. Uh, I think it would... Honestly, I think it would distract me because when I'm looking at the camera, I'm only looking at the camera. I have a tendency to look in my face, but really and truly, my eyes should be looking up there at the top of the camera is where I need to be focusing on, like where my eyes is right now. I'm not looking at my face. I'm looking at the camera itself, but... What you see is what you get. So I feel like in a way I am making a live video for the ones that care to watch. Um, I realize that there's people that have a lot of talent and be able to bring out the word. And, and uh, I've known people in the past, uh, they would get into the... Uh, system of amening themselves over and over and over. And I could literally count the times that they would say amen. In a given message, if I could just jot down a jot of every time I would hear the word amen, I would literally fill up the page. I remember a few years ago, I think I counted it up, that it was over 250 times that I heard the word amen in the message. And I'll just be honest with you, um, I have never done that. I am not going to do that. I mean, you know, if people enjoy what they hear, if they want to amen it, great. 
I had a lady at the nursing home the other day that she amen something that I said about the word of God and she amen it. And it was good to hear from someone else in the crowd to amen something. And what they was amening was, what does the word of God say? And you know, when I got an amen for making that comment, what does the word of God say? That there was really worth amening, but it didn't need to come from my mouth. It came from her mouth. And I let it be known that day that, you know, the reason that I have confirmation of the word that I just said is because I knew that it come out of my Bible that I've got here in front of me. It come out of the word of God. And when I made that comment about what does the word of God say, I heard the lady say, Amen. I had another lady tell me that she had a burning effect on the inside of her that she hadn't felt in a long time. And she kept on and on and, and, and telling me things that was really just somewhat blowing my mind. And I thought to myself, you know, it was worth the trip going over there. It's about 50 miles over there and 50 miles back. But I only go to that nursing home twice a month. But it was worth every penny of gas that I spent to go over there and prefer them folks more than I do myself. So I don't want to go in there and amen my own message. If others want to amen it, that's great. I got enough responsibility to tell the truth instead of me getting on there amening myself 150 times in the service. I think... Honestly, I think that the reason people do that is they're thinking of maybe words to say. And maybe they use the amen as a super short time out to give them opportunity to think of what else they're going to say, and then they'll Amen their words again. And they'll just keep on amening themselves. And you know, I don't mind somebody giving an amen. But I've done learned that I don't want to do it. I don't want to get up there and amen my own message. I don't mind other people doing it. If they feel like that that's what they want to do, let them do it. I think one of the things that I find that I am at fault of is I tend to repeat myself. Whenever I'm making a message, I will repeat the words that I just said twice. Sometimes three times, maybe even four times that I would repeat myself. But I want to think that a scripture that is worth talking about is worth explaining. And I remember something that my dear old mama told me years ago. She said, when, when you're up there speaking and you catch yourself wanting to repeat yourself, just say it in a different way. And I never forgot that. To try to say it in a way that adds to the message. Now, tonight I come out here with no message. 
I come out here with nothing in front of me. I have no notes in front of me. I have no particular scripture that I was going to read today. I don't find where the Apostle Paul, amen himself at all, that I can find. But again, I think one of the reasons that people does that is because they are unsure about the words that they're going to say. So therefore, they just throw in an amen. But to me, it gets to the point where if it's said in redundance, it takes away from the message. It don't add to the message. If I was to say a particular sentence about a particular subject or a particular part in the Bible, and I say that part again, I need to say it in a different way. One thing my mom told me is that the likelihood that anybody heard you the first time was very slim to none. And by saying it again the second time in a different way brings out the thought that you had. And it generally, I've, I've found looking at videos, especially my videos, that when I say something in, say, a particular verse, I will catch myself saying it the wrong way. And I don't realize it until I go back and listen to it. And it always seems that before the video is over, right then is when I correct the thing that I said to clear it up. I don't know what they call that when you say something backwards. And I know that I have been guilty of saying things backwards because of my um, inability to catch myself at the beginning. But I come in here with nothing written down in hopes that maybe the Lord Jesus will give me the right words to say without being so redundant. I don't mind being redundant in the word. I don't mind saying things over again in the word of God because the word needs to be redundant. And it does need to be said more than once. And it does need to be emphasized more than once. Because there might be people that might be having a bad day that day. Maybe they might not be able to hear as well. I know a lot of the folks that I spoke to on Thursday, part of me felt like that some of them wasn't hearing, even though that I was bringing the message out. There was a few people that were hearing. There was some that you could tell was just there in attendance. But see, I don't really know what they heard from the spiritual point of view. You know, I'm surely aware that if the Lord's working and the Lord is talking, the Bible says his word will not return unto him void. Now, my message might be redundant. My message might be sincere, and it very well might be I'm sincerely wrong. But my desire and my prayer is, is that I get the point across. I see people doing Bible study, they'll use three or four or five verses. But I found that the more I do a Bible study with one verse, it gives me a chance to hone in on that one verse. And generally, when the Lord gives you that one verse, you can make 
You can cook fish with that one verse. If the Lord is in the verse, and we know that his word is the word of God, just one verse will preach. You might repeat yourself more than once, and I know I do, and I probably get on somebody's nerves after a while. I had a video that I made recently of the place of torment. I was sitting by my fire, and I made a video with the camera shot on the picture of my fire in my fireplace. And I was pretty redundant in that message of that flame in that fireplace. But the reason I found myself repeating myself is because I was trying to emphasize the horror of the place of hell. And when I think about it now... How in the world could I come out here and just say one word about it and not emphasize the seriousness of the horror of hell? You know, the horror of hell needs to be the message all the way through the message. But yet there's people that will study their Bible and they will want to use five verses and they'll use seven or eight verses, but they don't take the time to really explain the verse. They're not given enough of an indication of the verse. That's the problem. That's the sad problem, is because we're looking at the note, we're examining the note, we're trying to get done in a reasonable amount of time. And you know what's amazing about bringing a video out here right now? I'm able to see exactly how many minutes that I'm using up as the clock is ticking away. But I don't look at the clock when I'm in church. I don't look at the clock when I'm at the nursing home. I don't look at the clock based on how was the people reacting. I feel like when I said all that I know to say, then I simply just close because I feel like that the Lord is done with my message. It doesn't need to be amen by me. It doesn't need my opinion. I think that if if people was to really hear the truth, and I'm talking about the real truth, the truth should always be sufficient. And people knows in the 18 minutes that I've been talking on so far, whether they've heard the truth or whether they hear me just rambling on by a bunch of words. I don't want to ramble a bunch of words. I don't want to just keep going to make a longer video, because I have the ability to just bury the message and just keep on and on and on talking about the message. And I do feel guilty at church when I speak a a 60-minute message to maybe just a few people. But you know, if we only have one that is in the service that is not saved, I want to give enough of the gospel for the one person that is not saved, because I feel like that is my duty to tell the gospel to that one person while I have opportunity 
to that person to hear the gospel. Because I do not want to stand in front of her casket and not know where she went. I don't want that responsibility because I am not going to paint the picture of somebody being in heaven when there's no evidence of belief that that person was ever in heaven. So I'm not going to lie. Am I going to get up there and say a bunch of swelling words? No, I'm just going to get up there and tell the people the gospel. The ones that is there in honor of a person. I'm going to share with them the gospel. And let the chips fall where they may. So the reason you don't hear Brother Ken come out here and go on and on about amen in my own message, I ain't doing it. I ain't doing it. I'm not going to be guilty of trying to take pleasure in amen in my own words. Jesus loves us, and I can amen that. Jesus died on the cross for us. I can amen that. Jesus is coming back one day, and I can amen that. And Jesus is going to return for the ones that are saved, and I can definitely amen that. So the message has been spoken tonight, and I didn't hardly read no verse. But ask yourself a question. Did you hear any of the gospel today? I want people to go to heaven. I want people to know Jesus. Elderly ministry is how you can get up with me if you'd like to talk. There's a phone number on the website. There's a link to the messages that I post on YouTube, and there's a bunch of them there. I think there's over 1,100 messages that you can go and pick you one and see if it blesses you or not. I don't have a lot of lookers, and I don't go after numbers. I just believe if the messages of God... Isaiah 55, 11 says that his word will not return unto him void. It won't return unto him void. If God can use this message to help somebody out there in video land somewhere or somewhere across the world, then I'm thankful. So if you need help, If you need someone to talk to, look me up. Elderly Ministry is the YouTube channel. Elderlyministry.com is the website. If I can help you, by all means, look me up. Thank y'all for tuning in.